Hello everybody and welcome to this presentation. My name is Lee Snyder, the product manager for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today I want to introduce the new property set access control manager, which is available in Trimble Connect. I made a previous video introducing property sets and how they work in conjunction with the data table. So I won't take the time to explain that. I will provide a link at the bottom of this YouTube video that will allow you to view that introduction. But we'll begin today's video assuming that we know what property sets are and how to use the data table. So what I'll do to begin is just take a look real quick here at some property sets that I've already created. So you can see on this steel column we have a fabrication workflow, shop review workflow, and erection workflow property sets and the values that I've already stored in there. And then uh, right below it we have the concrete column and then it also has some property sets here under the concrete workflow. In the first video that I made, the way that the permissions worked is that if a property set was created by someone in your email domain, you would have the ability to edit that property set. If it was created by somebody outside your email domain, you would have the ability to view it, but you wouldn't be able to edit it. Well, the new property set access control manager allows you a much better way to control and restrict access to people and your property sets. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. The premise of this is built around the groups that we define in our team section under our Trimble Connect project. So I'll open up this project, come to teams, and then you can see here that I have four groups already created. This will allow me to define the groups and the access that members of the groups should have to those property sets. Anybody who's not in a group, we can also set access for as well. So here's the list of the groups here. I've asked Dave Hideman and Dusty Roden from the Trimble team to show me how this works so that we can show the different access and permission rights that each user will have. So here under the fabricator group, you can see that Dave Hideman is part of that group. Over here under the detailing group, we can see that Dustin Roden is part of that group. Later in the video, we'll set the access rights that they'll have and show you what they see on their end. So the way that we access this manager is if I come back to manage property set libraries like we traditionally would before, this will open up the property set manager and this is where you can define all the different property sets that you want on your project. So I'll open up my Trimble Solutions USA library here and you can see these are the four categories that I showed already in the model. Each of these have their own individual drop down, date, text, uh, fields that people can edit. And now we've added in this new functionality here to manage the access control. You can click on this button here or we have this icon up at the top. Either one will take you to the same place. And this will open up the access control manager. So you'll see here at the top, this will list those property sets that we've already created. Those are the different categories. And then underneath each of them, we have a drop down that'll allow me to set edit access where you can view and edit the properties, or you can set read only access where they can only view them, or you can set no access, which means the individuals in that group actually won't see these property sets in their project. So those are the four groups that I've created. And then we have this generic one over here called library access. And this tool actually has two functions. The first one is that it allows you to set access all across the board. Like I did there, I set that to view and it changed everything else to view so that I don't have to toggle those one by one. Although I can come back and refine these later as needed if I want to change these per section if needed. The other thing that it allows me to do is to set the default that will be used if I were to add more property sets. So I'll show that later here in the video. If I add in a new property set, it will inherit this default library access setting as new things are added and I can always come back and refine those as needed. So let me change this here. The default access will be edit. And then I wanna further refine those that I add to groups I will restrict the settings that they have access to. So let's come up here to add access control for another group. And I'll just begin typing in my group. So the first one that we'll set will be concrete contractor. And I can set the default access that they should have. So I'll just go ahead and leave this as edit access. And then I can begin refining what I want these to be. So I'll just change these one by one to show you. 
and let's set this to read only. And then of course, under the concrete workflow, I wanna make sure that they have the ability to edit those. And then I'm gonna hide the rest of these from the concrete contractors so that they aren't able to see those. So let's add another group here. We'll go ahead and set this for the detailer group. And I'll set the default here to be read only, click apply. And that's the way that I'm gonna leave it. So the detailer will be able to view everything but won't be able to edit anything. So let's go ahead and add another group. So let's choose our engineer group and then we can define the status. So I'll set this to be read only here and then we can refine this further. So I'll actually hide these concrete workflow property sets from the engineer. I'll allow them to view the erection workflow. They don't need to see the fabrication workflow, but we do want them to be able to edit the shop review since they'll be doing the in-model review on this project. So one last one that we'll add, let's go ahead and add the fabricator. So we'll set the permissions for this group. I'll just change that to be read only. And then I won't allow the fabricator to see the concrete workflow. I'll let them see the erection workflow and the shop review status in case that information can be beneficial to them. And then of course, I'll allow them to edit the fabrication workflow property sets that are defined there. So once I'm happy with this, I'll go ahead and click on save. I can always come back and change this as needed. You'll notice this note down here that it may take up to 15 minutes for these changes to take effect. So just be aware of that. And now what will happen is I can come back into the model. And of course, because I had the default setting set to anybody that's not in a group, they'll be able to edit these. I can come in and I have edit access since I'm not actually in a group. So that's why I'm able to view those here. And then because I do have edit access that allows me to view all of these as well in the data table. So if I come here to columns and begin searching, I can type in status and I can see the CIP status, erection status, shop status. So for all three of those groups, I can also come in here and search for install, for example. And then I can use this information to, to view, to sort, to filter however else I would want to interact with that data. All right, so let's go ahead and see what this looks like on Dave's end. If I come back to my team and click on Fabricator, if you remember, Dave is part of this Fabricator group. So let's see what he's able to access on his side. So if I come back here to the Manage Access Control and I look at the Fabricator, by default, anything new he'll be able to see. We haven't added anything new yet, so that won't change. He'll be able to view the erection workflow. He can edit the fabrication workflow, and then he can view the shop review workflow, but he won't be able to see the concrete workflow properties. So let's take a look at Dave's screen. This is his model. We'll show you how this looks like based on the control settings that we set. So let's go ahead and click on this column. And then when we open up the properties panel, we'll be able to see that he does have edit access to the fabrication workflow, but not to shop review or the erection workflow. It's view only. So for fabrication workflow, let's go ahead and modify this. We'll change it to completed shipped and click save. And then of course, these other ones, he's only able to view. If we click on the concrete column down here, and look at the properties, we won't be able to see anything because of the control settings that we set where they shouldn't be visible to this fabrication group. If we open up the data table, the same permissions apply in here. Anything that's set to view or edit, you'll be able to access here within the column. So if we filter for this by status, we'll be able to see the erection and shop status, but we don't see the concrete status. That's not showing up in there. So even if someone specifically tries to filter for it, it won't show up. So if I open up this again, we can come in and type in CIP and you'll see that it won't be visible here. We can also type in install. Those are the two that we created and those aren't visible based on those settings. So back here under team, let's take a look at the detailer group. This is the group that Dusty is a part of. Back under the property sets, if we go to detailer, we can see that he'll be able to view everything, but doesn't have the ability to edit anything. So let's go ahead and take a look at what he sees. So this is Dusty's model. Let's zoom in on this same column. We'll open up the properties panel. And then up on the right hand side, we can see fabrication, shop review, and erection workflow. He can view them, but he's not able to edit them. 
And if he clicks on the column here and we view the properties, now we can see the concrete workflow. Again, view only, but he does have access to them. If we open up the data table and search for these, they'll be visible as well. So if we type in status, now we can see the CIP status, whereas Dave was not able to see that. And then if we type in install, this will also show up as well. So we see the install completion date for our use. So one last thing that I want to show is what happens when new property sets are added. So over here in the library access, this column right here, these will be the defaults that are inherited if I were to add a new category. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll come back to Trimble Solutions USA here and I'll in the bottom right hand corner, click the plus sign and add a new property set. So let's go ahead and give this a name. So let's call this site inspection. And then once we have that created, I'll just add one property here and we'll just call this inspection comments. And then we'll just leave that as a text. So once that's set up the way that we want, I can go ahead and publish that. And now if I come back to my access control over here for the site inspection, you can see that it inherited the default. So anybody who's not part of a group will have edit access. And because everybody else who is part of the group has view only, everybody will be able to see the site inspection comments. And of course, I can then further modify and refine that as needed. So there's a quick overview of the Access Control Manager. We also have additional documentation online. If you want to go in and review that, you can find that here. As always, we invite you to try out these new tools. Send us any feedback that you may have. And we hope you enjoy this development.